Hi everyone, I just wanted to go over how to code from one of the case studies. Now remember these are inpatient hospital charts. So with that they're going to be more complex because the patients coming in are obviously sick, too sick to go home. So keep that in mind. I would recommend you get out a piece of scratch paper and you want to read the discharge summary first, read the H&P, read any op reports, progress notes and then um, consultations and then if you write down everything that you think you have to code and then you want to go back and reread the discharge summary to make sure that you've covered everything. So inpatient coding we code everything according to UHDDS guidelines, right? So the principal diagnosis is what brought the patient to us after study. We want to code all secondary diagnoses which are anything that complicate care coexist, require treatment, extend length of stay, and then invasive procedures. So in an inpatient setting, we're not coding routine things, right? We don't code every time they order a lab or a medication or a chest x-ray. What we are coding for is big procedures that physicians personally do, such as a, a colectomy, a cardiac cath, a hydrocephalic shunt, if they put that in, um, all those kinds of major surgeries, not the minor things that an ancillary staff member can do. So with that, with this chart, our principal diagnosis that again, the physician's trying to tell us what brought the patient in after study. You, the coder, want to make sure that that's what this story is in the documentation. So the documentation says that the patient has, and this is a typo if you can see, neutropenia is spelled incorrectly. There should be a U there, but it's neutropenia secondary to chemotherapy, and then it says drug-induced neutropenia. The other thing I want to point out why we're on this page is you can see this is an old chart, right? The, the date's from 2008. So after we go through and jot down everything that we're going to code, I'm going to walk you through 3M. Now in 3M, you don't want to put an old date because you're going to get ICD-9 codes. Anything before October 1st, 2015 would be coded with ICD-9. You want to make sure you're putting in a current date to get to ICD-10 codes. So then the discharge medication, so it's telling us, you know, what the patient's going home with. Page three has more discharge uh, medications and then has new ones. Follow up, he's coming back in in four weeks, a brief hospital course. So our patient's a 38-year-old male with history of recurrent anaplastic oligodendroglioma, which is a brain cancer, right, and was treated with intra-arterial chemotherapy utilizing carblatin on 617. Immediately post-op, he had a left cerebral infarct and was sub subsequently transferred for rehab. He received some injections prior to transfer and then developed neutropenia. He had a UTI that was treated with Bactrim, um, and then he was transferred for the neutropenic precautions and management. So right now we have a few things that we want to jot down, right? So go ahead and jot down that he has the um, anaplastic oligodroglioma. He has the neutropenia, obviously that's what brought him in. He has a UTI and then he had a cerebral infarct that was from a procedure. So let's keep reading. So here's our H&P, and again, the H&P is telling the story of what he came in with. Discharge summary is after he stayed, what did we determine was going on? H&P is what we think when he's walking in the door. So the chief complaint is, again, the neutropenia from the chemotherapy, and it says he was transferred from somewhere for the management of the neutropenia following the chemotherapy. Again, he tells us he's 31 or 38 with oligodendroglioma, and he's had two um, treatments for that and surgical resection. He was admitted for chemotherapy and sustained an infarct of the left anterior and middle cerebral arteries immediately following an infusion of that medicine. So he was transferred to begin rehabilitation. 
So then it says patient was doing well until his therapies, but routine monitoring of CBC today reviewed or revealed that he had neutropenia. His platelets were low. He was diagnosed with a UTI. And then it gives us his active problem list, which is that neutropenia and the cerebral artery infarct. <clears throat> Then it gives us the UTI that the patient had, tells us that he has diabetes type 1 and epilepsy. And remember, when we're coding, we want to code chronic conditions. So epilepsy and diabetes are definitely important, definitely things that just don't go away. So you're always going to code those chronic things in an inpatient setting. Past medical history, it, again, if you notice, it has the diabetes and the epilepsy there, but they don't go away. So it's not really past medical history. As far as coding purposes, we're still coding it. So we're going to code it as current. And then there's a malignant neoplasm of the brain. Again, that's still going on. The patient was just getting chemotherapy for it. So we're coding as current. And reflux, um, he's actually being treated with the reflux as well. So we're going to code that as current. Um, tobacco use disorder, rarely smokes. We don't know if that was like a history of he used to use or a history that he quit. That That's not something that I would uh, code because we don't know really what the what the history about it is. And even if we look under history, under tobacco use, alcohol, drugs, sexually active, it all says not on file. So we don't know the history of any of those. So we're not going to code any of those. Then more uh, medications that he's on. So there's the uh, fentonin sodium. And now it says that the patient's admitted and goes over his active drug list again and his diagnoses, which we just talked about. So now a consult, a consult when another physician comes in to look at the patient. So this patient is being seen in consultation for the neutropenic follow-up. Says that the patient has that oligodendroglioma, which was anaplastic and removed earlier. This year he's received um, several cycles of radiation and chemotherapy, and then his latest bout of chemotherapy resulted in immediate aphasia, right hemopriasis, and a right facial droop. And then it says the aphasia has completely resolved after TPA treatment and an MRI that did reveal the presence of a cerebral vascular accident, and he was transferred back to whatever hospital for rehabilitation. However, because he had just a week ago Monday, which would be like nine days ago, started to receive intravenous chemotherapy through a PICC line in the right arm. The patient's cell counts have now been down to 5% of 1,200, and it was necessary not to have him in the common areas. Therefore, he was transferred back to the other hospital for reverse isolation, and I have been asked to see him. Then it says, in addition, he has been treated for Escheria coli urine infection, so that's E. coli, sensitive to everything except ampicillin and intermediate to augmentin. He is on trimethoprim sulfa for that. It was noticed only because he had foul-smelling cloudy urine. He had no dysuria, urgency, frequency, dark urine, or back pain, fevers, chills, or sweats. So we're also going to code the urinary tract infection due to the E. coli because that's something that they're currently treating. And then back up to the CVA, it says that the patient had intermediate aphasia, right hemopriesis, and a right facial droop. The aphasia has completely resolved. So the coding guidelines tell us if the condition is completely resolved before discharge, we can't code. So we're not going to code the aphasia, but we can code the um, hemopriasis and the facial droop following that cerebral infarction. So it just goes on to talk more about his medications, his exam that the physician did. And again, remember in an inpatient setting, we're not worried about an E&M code. So we're not looking at the exam unless we need to look at something specific, like if the patient 
had a broken arm and I want to know, was it the distal end or what part? So you don't have to go over the, the, fi the physical exam with a fine tube comb like you do when you're doing E&M coding. And then what we do want to look for is the laboratory data. So under there it does mention again that the urine grew out um, is Cheerio coli. So again, that's important. This is just the ending of that consult. Nothing there really that we need to be watching for. And then the progress notes. So you just want to skim through these. They should again say everything that you read in the HMP and the discharge summary, but you do want to just skim through those and see if there's anything mentioned that you didn't pick up before. Okay, and lab reports, uh, we, we're not clinicians, so we can't code off those. If there was a question on something that was growing, you could query the physician about it, but you can't just pick it up from the lab report and code it yourself. Okay, now let's go to 3M. Okay, so once we're in 3M, we're going to pick Mel and then 38, and again, make sure you do the product finder. Make sure you have a current admit date so that you're in ICD-10, not ICD-9. We're gonna hit continue. And our patient went to rehab. I think, let's go back and look at the discharge summary. Yeah, he will be transferred back to to start rehab. So we want to make sure we want to make sure that we pick that he was transferred back to that rehab facility. So our admit diagnosis is the neutropenia, and it was secondary to. So we're going to hit B, and it was secondary to drug-induced to the chemotherapy, right? So we're going to hit 1. So D70.1. So that's our admit diagnosis. We're also going to put that in as the principal because the admit is what they came in with and the principal is what the doctor determined after study was the reason. So it is both in this case. So that we know the code, we're just going to enter it. So for add diagnosis, I'm going to do D70.1. Okay, now let's do all our secondary. So remember our patient had quite a bit. The biggest one obviously is gonna be that brain cancer. So we're gonna do that oligo dendroglioma. Uh, and it was anaplastic, it said. So we're gonna hit one, it was primary. It was of the brain. We don't know exactly where it was in the brain, so we're going to pick unspecified. There wasn't a metastatic site, so we're going to hit no, do not wish to code. And we're not coding the procedure. It was already done. It was done before the patient got to us, to our facility, so we're going to hit no procedure. Now we're going to code that UTI, and it was due to Escheria coli, so we're going to hit one. And it was as a cause of UTI, so we're going to hit 8. We don't know exactly where in the urinary tract the infection was, so we're going to pick other or unspecified. They, the patient didn't have any symptoms of it. They just knew because of the look of the urine, so we're going to do no, do not wish to code. And yes, we want to code the E. coli, so we're going to hit 1. And we don't know the specific type so we're going to pick unspecified. And there wasn't any drug resistance, so we're going to hit no. Okay, so now we're going to do the hemoplegia that the patient had. And it was following a cerebrovascular accident, so we're going to hit 9. And it was following an infarction, right, after surgery, so we're going to hit 2. And it was his right side. 
we don't know and specified and we don't want to code and we don't want to code that. So now we're going to do the facial weakness. Again, it's following cerebrovascular, following an infarct. We don't want to code, don't want to code. Now we have to code the epilepsy. If I can spell. So we're going to pick two. And we don't know what kind of epilepsy, so we're just going to hit no. And then the diabetes, the patient was a type 1 diabetic, so we're going to pick type 1. No complication, do not wish to code. And the patient also had reflux. So we're going to pick three there. They didn't say anything about a hiatal hernia, so we're going to pick no. No procedures. And then the final thing is our patient came for a specific kind of aftercare. To our facility, so we want to make sure that we're coding the encounter for the aftercare. So once we have all the codes, you want to double check that everything you wrote down, you have reported. And then your DRG is right up here, the top, DRG 809. And to add your present on admission in 3M, it's really nice, you just right click and you come to present on admission. <clears throat> so present on admission is asking if he had that diagnosis when he arrived to your facility. So yes, he had this. Yes, he had this. Yes, he had that. Yes, 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 yes. And Z codes are exempt, so we can put exempt there. And see how it says these two are exempt as well. So we can check those and exempt. And then hit OK. And now our POAs are right there in our final screen. And that's what you want to do inside 3M to code an inpatient. I hope you found this helpful.